Good evening, 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 ladies and gentlemen, and I welcome all of you back to another rage video where tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I'm happy to report that we are on the road again immediately, and while we will get back up to speed with uh, Triumph of Steel, I thought it would be a good time as well that we went back in time just a little bit further, 10 years specifically, and what might possibly be considered, is, is this the first Manowar album out there? It certainly looks like it, and even going as far back as 82, this absolute, this, even like the, the, the cover of the album they did here looks like, oh, it's like it's been scuffed in places to that, but mind you, for an album cover, this looks gorgeous. A gigantic eagle and standing on top, rock, a clutching a banner of battle hymns. Now, to be honest, that's the even just the title of the album alone is enough to get me really, really excited. And I can't wait to see exactly because, of course, you would imagine, you would expect like a band to sound incredibly different from '82 than you would from '92 or even 2002. So. This leaves me feeling very, very excited. So, and I know you guys are probably very excited for this as well, because, my goodness, do we have a a, a following on here, for, especially if you love Manawa. So, if you guys want to check out the original video for yourselves, links will all be in the description down below. So, let's begin. Deftone in three, two, one, and... Oh, okay. Really? We're starting off on motorbikes? Okay, I think this... <laughs> I mean, listen, I'm not really what you might call a biker. I mean, I mean, I just got my driver's license very recently, but it's so hot in this room right now because the, the radiator, the actual knob to turn the temperature is broken, so whenever the heating does come on, the radiator has to stay on. But if I would, I and I've got motorcycle gear in there anyway, so it's not as if I wouldn't wear it, but god damn it, <laughs> I think I'd melt. And my skin's basically on fire anyway, but uh, let's, let's keep going. It's like meatloaf, but better than meatloaf. This is better than mom's meatloaf. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah.
Just worked a job. What the... Okay, first of all, first of all, I've, I've got to generally do this before we go anywhere else. Um, was this the very first Marowar album out there? I, I hope it is because of, of about what I want to say next. Okay, so here we go. Okay, Marowar albums. Um, while we're getting this set up, because the, the internet decides it wants to, you know, go on strike or something... Let let me just let me explain this to you guys as well as I can because, um, you know you you ever heard of this band this uh, prog rock uh, band called Rush? Uh, they started off in seventy five. They kept going until I don't technically remember what their last tour was. I think it might have been about two thousand eighteen, or it, it might have been twenty fifth. But then again. Uh, Getty Lee, Alex uh, uh, Leifson, uh, Leifson, Leifson, and Neil Peart, God rest his soul, were only about like they, they would only be about like their mid sixties, right about now. But God, God damn it, this is like this is like if you love Rush, you're going to love Manawa, and this is back in nineteen eighty two. And just for reference, um, they came out with this album called... Holy shit, this was their first album. <laughs> so you know what that means, don't you, ladies and gentlemen? That means that, yeah, for all intents and purposes, you you see this new, out, this, new this giant new album called Battle Hymns by this strange group from New York City called Manawa. You pick it up. You, you, you take you, you take the big LP out and then you put you put it on your record player and then you take it for a spin. This record player that you probably your parents probably got you after completing your O levels and riding on and on my dad tone. You listen to it and just oh god, I'm I think this is it's, curiously enough. If I was still in my early 20s and listening to this and I, I would have felt this was the sort of thing that absolutely would have appealed to me. This is the sort of thing where, you know how 
it, usually in history, whenever there's like big historical events that happen, for it could be Vietnam, Watergate, uh, the, the war, the war in the Middle East, or even the Syrian civil war, which I st ten years ago I still remembered very, very well. And aside from the the massacres and the bloodshed. There's, there will be something going on that you'll be able to like recall or in some way process because they're, they're just writing about what life was sort of like. I mean, this is about a dude, like you said, this is about a dude who got sent to Vietnam and now he's back. He's unemployed despite the fact that he served and fought for his country. And the only thing that matters to him is what he has. And what he has is really, really awesome. And when you go back to it, just thinking about it, is there anything else that matters? In fact, it, it, there really shouldn't be anything else that matters because when you think about what people were lied to and what people had to fight for absolutely no reason whatsoever, you get to you, you get to stuff like Deftone and it re it revives your spirit because you may think that there's some things in this world you will be constantly lied to and you'll be told they were absolutely for the greater good. Brexit, for example. Let me tell you something right now. If I started writing music, you absolutely would believe I would tell you. The first things that probably come out of my life was Brexit broke us or something like that. So, um, Brexit of humanity. Bre Brexiting humanity. That's the lit... I've, I've worked on a title. I, you know what? I'll tell you what. Where's, where, where is it? Um, hang on. There we are. That's I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna friggin' write a song called Brexiting Humanity. Um and it's literally gonna like start off on the like one the, the chorus going lies, 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 lies and then it'll maybe cut to something like Nigel Farage saying that Brexit is good because Brexit is great or something like that. So we'll we'll do like a parody of one of those things. But more importantly, just Musically, the song is absolutely, it is an absolute peach. It plays hard and it's, it, like I said before, it, it sounds sort of like Meatloaf, but I think this is better than Meatloaf because you hear Eric Adams, he, he has the kind of um, uh, Geddy Lee uh, high-pitched tone to his voice, but then he like screeches out and then the solo towards the end and then that enormous breakdown. The hook in this song is literally as sharp as the blade that this dude probably carries when he's riding his motorcycle. <laughs> well, it's 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 this is this is not this is not a this is not like a this is not a, this is not a slice and dice gang who's gonna pull you up on the side of the road. This is, this song is a slice of life, a slice of lifestyle. But does it determine your deaf style or your deaf tone? You never know, ladies and gentlemen. You never know. And um, th there's got to be a phrase to describe this. Like it It's like establishing nostalgia. Or, so or you can like relu relive through somebody's sense of nostalgia. There's got to be... um. Like, 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 you know what I mean? There's got to be like a... Like a, a moon landing effect. Maybe that's what we should call it. The, the moon landing effect. Tell you what, I'll make. A, I'll write a song about that too. We'll call it the moon landing effect. And I will literally do it in the style of early Manoir or even mid eighties Rush. Maybe not. So maybe not on uh, Grace Under Pressure. Grace Under Pressure was just sad. For in, in, in many more ways than one. It, 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 for those who don't know, uh, Grace Under Pressure was literally the album that sounded like it was written by Clint Eastwood. It was just depressing and sad, but this felt hopeful. This felt glorious. This felt like you had a reason to fight and you had a reason for being, despite how bad you were tread and let down. If you will, you will take over the establishment because the, before the establishment ever took over you. Keep riding, ladies and gentlemen. Just we're standing at the crossroads and which way are we gonna go? So anyway, I hope all of you guys have enjoyed this reaction video Please make sure to leave all your thoughts and comments in the comment section down below. Let me know what you guys felt of Deaf Tone for Yourselves by Manoir and I cannot wait to see all of you guys again in the next video. 
Take care and bye-bye for now.